it does. One, baby. Yeah, a number of years ago, we've uh, we 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 got so used to seeing this this support matchup that it's just kind of stuck in the back of our heads. But actually, most of the time, it's been uh, you know a lot of Renata before that point, probably a bit more of the Lulu. Of course, Yumi's come and gone as well, and is back on the band table once again. Um, what we have now with these compositions coming in, though, is quite a dangerous combo coming in from NIP, where they have a lot of very good poke, where you have something like an Ephelia Assault adding into a burst combo from very long range. You have Maokai and Jace. That's a combo we've seen an awful lot through Spring. And you have good side lanes. So I think what this game is going to come down to is anyone's legend trying to find a way to group up and stop that side lane of the Gnar and the Jace really taking over before things really start falling apart. They need to start grouping up and use that Jinx as their power point. Well, we'll see if they can. The Jinx, in my mind, one of the strongest champions in the game currently. I feel like there's a lot of champions that are being talked about as being incredibly overpowered, but when it comes to team fighting later on, for my money, Jinx wins that 100% of the time against the Velios. The range advantage just feels so strong a lot of the time. But like you say, the Jace can be the difference maker when it comes to that range advantage. If we can get the poke down, Maokai can close the gap. Nautilus can close the gap. There will be pressure towards anyone's legends ad carry as we head into game number one on summoner's rift get this matchup underway i completely got jump scared by that horse i didn't know that skin had that one it's like oh hi there friend <laughs> i mean it wasn't that scary let's <laughs> i don't know I just, jump look, scare okay, is the I, <laughs> <laughs> I like to think it's kind of like a bit more of a, a vague term now jump scare are you actually scared or is it just a, like an exclamation of shock either way you know, language is a wonderful thing. Here on AL, replacing Pin Z today to see what he could bring to the table. He's got the Ooh, Nico. Chance of something in I'm lane. hoping for a big game as he goes for the flash. But Angel reads the play, flashes himself, gets out to safety. Perhaps could have waited for Xiaohao to go in first there. Maybe, but I think if uh, I think the gauge rage might have been a little too long. See that IP though, despite the fact that Pop Blossom's been used and the fact that they managed to get Invincible down to this Herald early, have not managed to find themselves onto the Herald after that point. It's reset, but now Xiao has the angle. Here we go, behind enemy lines, Invincible has to jump away. Shadow, the next target is there comes Nico and harder finds himself first blood. Invincible wants to answer, but I don't think he can 1v3 this. The rest of the team is not coming. He's mega nah, but that would be full on 1v3 as Nautilus in the mid lane alongside Angel cracking the way. Very early into the game. Going back into this replay though, it's very important to realize that Despite the fact that Jace survives, Jace has no impact on this fight. You don't have a Shock Glass coming in. You don't have a big Maokai ultimate coming in. And NIP feels like after that Herald reset, why are you still here? It feels like they just overstay and they get punished for it. Despite the Herald being taken on the top side by NIP, we don't see that traded for an AD oh, carry getting five plates to the bottom side. As really Watch for the Maokai ult. There might be a fight here. In. Photic's over the wall with red and white. This could be good for Photic if he can find the target. Zora the target for now. Moonlight Vigil, that'll be one for the Abelios. In the meantime, Shadow walking away with his life. Doesn't have his ult available. Already used that one and the rest of the team there for AL. Perhaps he needs to back off a little bit quicker. See the start to it right now. Significant CS advantage, significant played advantage too. But at the cost of that, you're losing on the bot side of the map. This was the kind of awkward moment when you realize actually you're in a choke point against the Maokai and despite the fact the Shadow has no flash and is a little bit behind, this is not the kind of terrain you want to be fighting on. And for a brief moment, NIP do get some advantages. Yeah. It's, it's the second that ZDZ starts channeling that TP. It's a little bit awkward for them, but they would love to find themselves some of that form which has gone amiss for the last split or two. Coming around to the second dragon, they have ults, they have summoners. What can they do? They also have themselves first into the river. Can they protect that position with Maokai ult? That's going to be the most important thing. Remember, AL got the first Drake here. So this would only be one for NIP if they get it. Pull in onto Zora. He's down before the fight even begins here. The roots across the team as well. But here comes Xiaohao to turn it around. And in the meantime, Pop Blossom for Harder's alone. He's gone so deep for the Pop Blossom, but no follow-up from the team whatsoever. And that means a double kill for Botic as well as a Drake use that Mega Nart to his own advantage. That's one half of the fight. When you look at the other half though, it's just completely a miss from what anyone's legend were trying to do as a team. As you were kind of as we were saying just before this, Botek and Schwab, they had a lot of tools available to them. They had the chakrams as well onto this fellas. Large amounts of damage, but look how these big plays are happening on the different sides of the fight. If they happen all in one place, awesome. But you can't split them apart like that. 
Yeah. First off, great hook coming out from Drought. <laughs> Drought just stands and tanks him, flashes out. Giga, giga Chad Drought right there. Uh, as voting. What uh, was that? Just Gale forces in, has to flash straight back out. Eye Boy is caught alone at Raptors for oh. some reason, as Invincible flings them all back into the play. Zora flashes out, and it, it's an explosive fight, that's for sure. Like, sort of mispositioning. Being well, ask and you shall receive. There's a Scion. Look at this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not disconnected. He's just the bouncer. And that does a really important thing of stopping ZDZ getting good range to deal with Fotik. Fotik then uses the safety that is support for for him to do whatever that was. Um, and in the retreat, things just get really split from AL. They are very fortunate. Invincible takes a couple of tower shots and at least delivers one kill back. Yeah, Shaha kind of saving the day there. Clones and Cyclones. And that's going to be a very difficult thing for them to contend with because what does this team do besides that? They can engage in mid lane is what they can try. Yeah, Fotik Gale forces out. Can he survive? No. Good pickup by Xiao Hao and Arda. Now the re-engages. The roots come across the team. Angel's here and certainly has damage to work with. Zora goes down one for one now. But it's AD carry for support. But AL blinking health bars. I don't really know if they can contest still. That'll probably be their win condition. <laughs> this is... you got to count your minions, folk. That's that's uh, that's one more than there should be. One minion. Ah, ah, ah. Fodic just about manages to buy enough space for a turnaround to come in. But he's just caught out on that wave in a way that everyone is doing so against Nico right now. Yeah. I feel like there's, there's going to be a turning point where people habitually count minions. And even in games where Nico isn't being played, people will be like, how many <laughs> minions are in that wave? <laughs> it's going to become a habit at, at some point. But I don't feel like we're there just yet. Oh, Zora. Whoa, that's, what, three auto attacks and Zora through his W nearly goes down. Angel has to flash. Cyclone is there. The rocket as well. But he walks away with his life. And that's good enough. Shock blast in to set up a shutdown. But in the meantime, fotic has been caught. Shadow with a big play on the backside alongside Harder here. And Invincible now trying to clean up. ZDZ goes down. Boy still going strong though, but not for long. Oh, the flash at the last second. Angel can't find the kill. It's real messy, but it still comes up NIP. Harder nearly fighting himself a kill there. You wouldn't understand. It's a side laning thing. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm a, I'm a Yorick enjoyer. I've, I've felt that feeling. Uh, let's take another look at what happened on Devotic here. I think maybe just overestimating his safety is harder. Really nice flash forwards. Yeah, and they've been trying to catch this Aphelios so often. And they did manage to catch him in that last mid lane fight. It just wasn't quite enough to see things through. And Marco has been thrown again. It's all kicked off. Invincible, the target jumps over the wall, will go down. Good advantage for AL. Can they turn it into more? Shadow, the next target. As iBoy starting to get these resets going. That's two. ZDZ can't be taken down by Fotik. He doesn't have the damage for that. It's harder. Sending his clone to recall in the face of NIP. ZDZ almost going down here. Remember, the mid-tier two, very low from earlier. NIP trying to threaten that. But AL, having none of it, goes it's straight to the Baron. It's the second act of the game. The Baron's alive. AL, like every other LPL team, knows that everything can turn around this Baron. An attempt there. The Moonlight Vigil comes in. What is that damage? This Angel arrives as well. It's 3v5, and NIP is somehow making it work. ZDZ will go down to Fotik next. There's Angel on the hunt here. Harder the target, and Angel goes in. One more auto would do the trick, and he finds it. Xiao Hao now in a 1v1, and will get the shutdown. It's 3v2 on the map, I believe. No. Two are over in the base, it's Troll and Fotik on the scene of the Baron, as Shadow now re-arrives on the scene. It's an absolute brawl, it's a bar fight. We've got some broken legs and some black eyes across the board. Angel's down, but he is the only member of NIP not present at that Baron. AL felt like they found an angle, but there's just way too much damage from the Jace and the Aphelos with all of their long-range bursty ultimates and combos to come into play. At least AL have an angle towards this dragon with the Hextech gates allowing them to get back out onto the map. It means that there might at least be a contest, but they're still going to have to wait for their yeah. solo laners to arrive by foot because they don't have teleports. Yeah, I don't think that this is something AL can actually go for, to be honest, because with the Hex gates there, NIP will be able to arrive, and they have an 8,000 gold lead at this point. I feel like these fights have been way closer than they have any right to be. AL are fighting tooth and nail, but they are losing uh, those fights to uh, the nail ZDZ. <laughs> He's gone real deep on this one, Invincible, just going to stack Meganar off of it. In fact, 
Not even going to get any Mega Dark. Just going to get a kill instead. But it bought space for the Dragon to be taken <laughs> by AL. Was this intentional? I don't know, but uh, hey, we'll take it. Did, did anyone order Uber Eats? I think your delivery driver's here. That is... That was a decision, and I understand the thought process of, I, I'm just going to buy time for my team to get this Dragon. That's the most important thing. Not quite sure you need to give your life for it. So this is going back towards that Baron, though. Um, AL, they found a couple of pickoffs before this. Again, they understand that the Baron is... Oh, that is the main objective. If you get that, you can change so much this gold deficit. But this Nico ultimate, as opposed to the last two, doesn't catch Photic. And then Photic does that. An Angel adds in the rest of the damage. You absolutely shred through those HP bars. Despite the fact that the jungler and the top laner are gone, the damage was still always on the board for NIP, and they shred them with it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like uh, ZDZ going full zealot there. My life for Aya, or my life for the dragon. <laughs> Doesn't quite work, but now AL forced into the base. They're against the Baron. Whether they got the Drake or not, Angel is going to be able to get the tier two in the top side as he has just solo pressure there. And we'll get that increased gold, remember? It's like 600 not gold for that tower. Plus oh, as if Angel gold. wasn't doing enough damage already. I know. He is just, uh, the extra gold real scary definitely needed that. I feel like Jace is one of those champions as well where when you think about Jace, you think of him as that like poke champion that likes a siege, likes a, a, an elongated standoff, right? But actually, when you get to like three, four items, yes, you do like that situation, but you can essentially function as an assassin as well in the right in the right moment. When you go a hammer form, you really chunk. Yeah, it reminds me a little bit of LeBlanc because LeBlanc is a similar kind of thing. That poke goes from being half your HP to all of it. And at this point in time, NIP, they really don't need that much of an opening to land that damage. They're currently trying to play on multiple lanes. This might be an opportunity for AL to find themselves a clutch engage while NIP are moving between lanes. There was a moment while they are on all three. They've just uh, kind of trimmed that down to two lanes, just Wait. mid lane and top lane. AL, they Harder. need to find an engage though. They're just getting whittled. Hard as a minion. <laughs> He's a caster minion. Will it work? Will he find his opportunity? His seventh game of LPL, and he no, wants to make the play. Work. He's on to Votic. It works. The cleanse comes on through. Cyclone is there. Votic on the back line. Saved by Droll. And now Shao Hao turns gold. And Invincible arrives on the scene. Shadow down. Both junglers down. Is now Droll tanking up. But Invincible's mega. And he finds four with his ultimate. Angel in the fray as well. But Votic can't I be close to do damage. He's been abandoned. Invincible can't live up to his name. And it's another Nico Jedi mind trick. These aren't the minions you're looking for. There's an extra caster in there, and they don't count the minions. Photic once again doesn't die to the Nico ultimate, but this time the chunk is large enough that there is one AD carry able to fight, and one which has to just run for the hills. NIP, despite their huge gold lead, cannot finish the game there, and they take themselves a team fight loss. And once again, these fights that have no right to be as close as they are. Look at the gold difference. It's almost 10,000 in favor of NIP. But every single team fight this game has been so close and so scrappy. I feel like if AL's macro was a little bit better, this would be a totally different game. Absolutely. And, and again, this is one of the things which I've loved watching about this summer split, even though we're only a couple of weeks into it, of LPL. Every team, regardless if they're first place or 17th place right at the bottom, they understand you just need to take one good fight at the right point in the game and you can really turn things on their head. Gold difference be damned, a good angle is always a good angle. This is the angle which happens in that last fight. It's a minion trick once again. Maybe they've fooled them by um, disguise themselves as a melee minion so much in this game that they weren't expecting the caster minion. You have to count all types, folks. And Harder lands himself a really good engage. Just the fact that Photic has to blow so much of his defensive potential going backwards, blows that ultimate onto a stopwatch as well, means that a lot of that gold difference in the AD carries is just not apparent. One AD carry is doing damage, the other one is. And I feel like if NIP are just more on the same page here, it, they can walk away without Invincible going down. That can be a, a neutral fight, right? It's Harder. <laughs> That was a chunk and a half. It was actually a minion health bar, so that wasn't as big of a chunk as it looked like. Um, but it, they could have walked away from that, but Invincible kind of going in as the rest of the team's going out, and Angel throws a shock blast, but it's really all he could offer. Svotic, cleanse available, has a QSS now as well. He knows that this Nico is a problem. We are getting to the point where at least, si look, Sion's not going to be healthy if he gets hit by all the poke in the world. 
but he can tank those shock blasts a little easier than the rest of the team. As long as he can stand in front of Angel, block some of this, there's the chance that AL can find themselves in a position to fight. Invincible, turning into Mini Nar here. AL could potentially push in, but look at the waves on both sides of the map. They are crashing into the base right now. NIP, they've sent Invincible to go get that third Drake for them as they go and contest Vision around the Baron area. They don't want to give that up for free as Votic and Highboy on that mid-wave clearance duty. It's uh, January sale right here as the clearance is fully coming on through. But the Drake should be taken down by Invincible. I believe the minions took a tower in the top lane there and are looking towards an inhibitor's hard as that to go and answer that fact you can see the tower incredibly low hp in the bottom lane as well so those side waves doing serious work for nip yeah it was very much helped by the fact that nip did have a brief period of time with the last baron buff that they could just all sit in different lanes and hit those towers whittle them down in hip towers yes they regen over time but it's a fairly slow thing those minion waves Finishing off some of that uh, dirty work, which has started a little earlier. Uh, the next work on the table, though, is setting up against, again, for this Baron, next one of the game. That'll probably be where the next hammer blow lands. Right now, vision control helped out by Maokai Saplings, very much in NIP's favor. So what AL need to do, they need to get real control of this mid lane wave if they can. <laughs> They're trying to do another minion trick with the Nico. Not going to find anything at this point, but that's what AL are looking for. A big mid lane engage so they don't have to deal with all of this topside vision from NIP. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one, though, as Invincible is just trying to ignore the Scion and go for the tower. Will be able to do so. So tower, take it down. He'll walk away with his life as well. And as he turns mini, he'll continue to threaten. Eyeboy trying to move down to the bottom side here to potentially get a pick onto the top laner. But the second Eyeboy shows up vision in the bottom side of the bat, you know NIP will go for that Baron. NIP, they have all the control they need right now. They just need to avoid those clutch and engages, which they've fallen a little bit afoul of. Look at the vision in the bottom side jungle as well. Invincible has so much information to play with. He's under no threat, even with these hovers. That could be so very important, because it is that balancing act between top side of the map, where you're trying to poke out, get control of that mid wave yourselves if you can, and then also buy space for Invincible. The side laning pressure really becoming very effective. Zora has ult, has flash, might be able to land a stun onto someone. Look at Invincible. He just walked through the base because the top in him's open as well. He can just sweep up this entire base. And in the meantime, AL, they're fighting for mid prio for a Baron that realistically is just not even <laughs> contestable like, anymore. I, he's literally just there. Was like, did, uh, I'm, I'm housekeeping. Did, did, did you leave a sign on the door? Well, he's there again. Trying to, be, trying to go into 1v2 now? Yeah, hops over the head of CDZ. Xiao Hao will jump on in as well. Invincible about to turn Mega. He needs to turn Mega, and he does! Jumps away, whiffs the ultimate, finds a stun. Duo with a knock-up onto Xiao Hao. Can they turn it into a fight win? NIP 4v5 at this point. As Harder behind enemy lines gets onto Angel. The Pop Blossom on three! This is the moment for AL if they can find Votic. But he's still going strong for now. ZDZ onto that back Bad line. 3v2 Shadow and Votix still pushing forward as the recall from Angel has TP available and he wants to rejoin the fight. He's TPing behind enemy lines. It's no longer harder on the flank. Angel's found his way into the fray once more. ZDZ, he started the fight with an ult and he'll end the fight with an ult as he leaves his jungler to die. We've talked about Angel occasionally having those pop-off games, but asked for consistency. And this chase has been consistently excellent in this first game. NIP, they have to brawl for it, but they're going to walk away with the first game. Yeah, brawl is definitely the key word for this one. 30 kills in a 35-minute game. It was a quiet early game, but once we got to 20 minutes, nothing but team fight. ZDZ surviving for now. Baron being used on the super minions. Can they actually end the game? Botic is here too. with the turret as well. Like you say, Eyeboy coming back up. One turret down. Should be two as well. They need to finish this Nexus off, but AL are moving on in. Invincible about to turn Mega. Zora's going to go down before the fight once again. The ZDZ tries to charge in hard as down, though. And that'll be that Eyeboy flashing onto the fountain as NIP take game number one. Well, um... Slow early game made up for by a pretty explosive mid and late game.